Welcome to the Touch MBA Admissions Podcast. Do you need help figuring out which schools to apply to or how to get into the world's top MBA programs? Hey, you're not alone. Join thousands of others on this podcast and on our site, touchmba.com, as they seek the admissions edge. And now, here's your host, Darren Joe. Hey guys, welcome to the Touch MBA Podcast. This is your host, Darren. And as always, we're here to help you find and get into uh, the best MBA programs around the world. In this episode, we're going to learn from a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner about how to stock a story. In other words, what are the core elements of a story and how can you use these core elements to stock your best stories for your MBA application and write compelling essays that rivet admissions officers and make them want to know more about you. But first, one quick announcement, and this is a big one. I've been working really hard the past month on an online training course to help you get into the top MBA programs. My goal with this course is to make sure that you maximize your time and energy this application season and get in the first time or if it's your second time, second time. It's my five plus years of experience as an admissions director and an admissions consultant condensed into a comprehensive series of videos um, that covers all steps of the application process from picking schools to positioning, to writing great essays, uh, to acing your interview. It's all in this course. Um, It's the same techniques that I've used to help applicants get into schools like Stanford, Chicago Booth, and INSEAD, Um, and it's what admissions consultants charge thousands of dollars for, and my goal with this is for those of you who can't afford that, uh, to give you the next best thing. Uh, There's also going to be a private forum um, in the course uh, where you can ask me admissions and uh, application questions as well, so you have access to me. Um, I've really put a lot of hard work into this course and I think it can really materially help improve your chances. Um, And I'm selling it for only $47 until midnight of June 30th. So that's in about 10 more days, uh, the price will double. And I'm doing this to just reward the first group of students who take the course. Uh, The price will never be this low again. I mean it when I say you should be getting 10 times the value uh, of that through this course um, and I want to make sure you know you get in and you make the most uh, of your time and effort this application season so that $47 will be lifetime access to the admissions edge course and the forum which will be continually updated I urge you to take action now uh, the sooner you learn these techniques um, and principles uh, the better chance you'll have to put together a really strong and competitive application you can find this course at touchmba.com slash course. Enough pitching, (laughs) and uh, let's get straight to this week's episode. So while the GMAT may be the most intimidating part of the application process, writing great essays may be the most frustrating. How can you tell so much about yourself in so few words, especially with MBA programs cutting down on the number of essays. You know you have to tell a great story, but you've never been an admissions officer and in the position to read thousands of essays. So how do you know if you're telling a good story in your essays? Well, I thought it'd be good to learn about what makes a great story from a master of storytelling, a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner, John Franklin, who pioneered narrative nonfiction, so porting real events, but in a a narrative style that entertains and illuminates like fiction does. And his first chapter in his book, Writing for Story, is called Stocking the Story. And what he means by this is having the nose for what makes a good story, understanding the core elements of a great story. So you're probably asking, well, what does this have to do with my MBA application? I think it's crucial that you know these core elements, these these four core elements of a story, so that you can find and identify your best stories for your essays, first of all. And second of all, you'll know how to structure your essays to keep your reader's attention, and this structure 
will really allow you to show the ad comms who you are as a person without telling them. So we're going to go through these four elements and then we're going to talk through some example MBA essays and identify those elements. So by the end of this podcast, you know, you'll really have a tight formula for a great story. First, uh, here's the definition that John Franklin gives for what a story is. A story consists of a sequence of actions that occur when a sympathetic character encounters a complicating situation that he confronts and solves. I'm going to say that one more time. A story consists of, number one, a sequence of actions that occur when, uh, number two, sympathetic character encounters a, number three, complicating situation that he, number four, confronts and solves. So the four key elements of a story are all in that sentence. There's a complicating situation, there's a resolution to that complicating situation, there's a sequence of actions, and then tied into all three of those things, there's a character who cares deeply about the complicating situation, who takes action, and who resolves uh, the problem and learns from it. Okay, so let me uh, delve a little deeper into each of these core elements of a story uh, before getting into a couple examples, a couple real MBA essays where we can identify these elements. First, what is a complication? A complication is any problem. It's any event that triggers a situation that complicates our lives. And this complication can be physical, it can be psychological, it can be um, an external complication or an internal complication. And by introducing a complication at the beginning of a story, the author raises a problem that introduces tension and suspense and keeps the reader reading. Because the reader wants to know, well, how will this problem be solved? And what will the outcome mean to the character. And your story is to have more drama, then the complication should be significant and, and very important to the main character. That's you. That's the first element. The second element is resolution, which means a change in the character or the situation that resolves the tension. So you're going to introduce tension with a complication and you're going to destroy that tension with a resolution. And a good story must have a resolution that specifically resolves the complication that you raise. So you want to make sure you check the pair. Make sure the problem you're raising in your essays is resolved. And resolutions must be products of the character's own efforts. Uh, for the story to be powerful, that effort must be significant. So if you have a problem or a complication, then you must be the one who puts forth the effort to solve uh, that complication. And Franklin goes on to say that resolutions of the greatest value are constructive, and that what the reader really wants is to be shown some insightful choices that have positive results so that they can learn something the easy way for a change. So those are four key points about resolutions. The third element of a story is action. So after identifying the complication and the resolution, you need to match these two components of your story with action. And what actions do you take to resolve the complication? Why is it important to you? And how have you grown or changed from the experience. So these are the three key elements of a story. Complication, action, and resolution. And linked to those three elements is, is the fourth, which is character. Of course, your story has to have a sympathetic character, and that's going to be you in your MBA essays. So it's important that when you're picking the complication, that this complication is so important for you to resolve that you take massive action to come to a resolution. And then once you have resolved that problem, you're going to learn and change because of all the effort you, you put forth. So those are the four key elements of a story. So what I suggest you do is 
go to a site like oringo.com. Oringo.com is an MBA admissions consultancy, and they have a number of, a, of successful essays you know, that have gotten MBA applicants into top schools. So you can actually see some sample essays and practice identifying these four elements um, in those essays. Of course, if schools are asking you very basic essay questions like describe your career from college graduation until now, you know, you're not going to need these four elements of a great story. But if they are asking you uh, any type of question that's trying to ascertain your, your personality, who you are as a person, your motivations, then that's a great time to use these four elements. Let's look at two samples two sample MBA essays. The first one is from Oringo.com and it's in response to tell us about a significant leadership experience. And this candidate got into UC Berkeley Haas. One of the most difficult situations I've ever had to face during my tenure as VP of my company was the decision whether to fire Jane, an experienced employee who I had worked with closely for two years. The decision arrived at my desk after a new CEO was appointed and I became his VP, in charge of most employees. Together, we decided that we were going to transform our small and quiet company into a leading research firm with a target of 50% sales growth over the next two years. For that, we needed a devoted team that was committed to this goal. This vision did not fit Jane. She left a large corporation where she worked long hours, and one of the main reasons she chose to join us was the laid-back and relaxed atmosphere of a small company, exactly what we were determined to change. Although talented, she did only the minimum necessary and was not willing to make any sacrifices and commit to our goal. I faced a tough decision. On the one hand, firing a talented and experienced employee in a time when most of the employees were new, and in, in uh, parentheses, as we wanted to drive growth, we recruited new people, end parentheses, seemed unwise. In addition, I knew that our relationships with major clients might get hurt and a substantial knowledge base would be lost. On the other hand, not firing her would mean establishing double standards for our employees. Most were required to work hard, whereas Jane was leaving early and refused to contribute extra efforts. Her opposition to the change had already begun creating undesired effects, as a few of the employees resented her. In order to solve the problem, I tried to make Jane relate to the new goals and change her attitude. In addition, we also improved the company's bonus program, based also on her comments, in order to reward the extra efforts. When all milder measures failed, I had to make a decision. I decided to fire Jane. Although I knew that in the short run, things would be difficult, I concluded there was no other way. I needed the most dedicated team possible, a team who was personally committed to the growth of the company. Jane, as the head of a major division, would have undermined this effort in the long run. Personally, making the decision was very hard. It meant firing someone with whom I had worked closely for a long time. However, in terms of team spirit, matters improved greatly, and we succeeded in building the right team to lead the company forward. The new division head had replaced Jane. Uh, that replaced Jane was a highly motivated manager, and with her, I had a team that could reach the ambitious goals we set. And indeed, in two years, we have doubled the company's project capacity with a great improvement of research quality and customer satisfaction. Okay, so let's identify the core elements of the story. What is the complication? Well, right away, the applicant introduces the complication in the first paragraph. One of the most difficult situations I've ever had to face during my tenure as a VP of my company was the decision whether to fire Jane, an experienced employee. So the complication is a tough decision, whether or not to fire an employee. What's the resolution? He ends up firing Jane. And what are the actions that the character took? Well, first, uh, he went through the pros and cons, thought through the advantages and disadvantages of firing Jane. Then he tried to speak to her, to relate to the new goals, to change her attitude. And he also tried to change the, bonus, the company's bonus program based on Jane's feedback in order to incentivize you know, extra efforts. Both those measures failed, and in the end, he resolved his problem by firing Jane. From these three elements, we understand what type of business person and what type of leadership skills this applicant has. We know he's going to thoroughly consider all his options. We know that 
He doesn't take matters of personnel lightly. We also know that in the end, he's going to do what's best for the company. He's going to make tough decisions in the interests of the company. And he said all of this without, without telling me that. He doesn't say, I make decisions for the best of my organization. No, but through this great story where he introduces a complication and then there's a sequence of actions where he's trying to solve this complication and then eventually you know, sharing his resolution, which is firing Jane and then discussing the results of that firing of how his company grew. He's telling me a lot about him as a character, right? So that's one example of, of an applicant using these core elements of a great story to write a really compelling essay. Let's look at one more example. And this one is from 65 successful Harvard Business School essays, which uh, I will link to the show notes as well. And this essay response uh, was to the question, what are your post MBA goals? When I was an infant, Shanghai's air pollution poisoned my lungs. Severe asthma attacks led to recurring hospitalizations. Doctors told my mother I would always be sickly. After moving to Minnesota at age five, however, my asthma disappeared and my respiratory system healed. In 2005, I returned to China and what I saw saddened me. In Xi'an, state-owned factories were running 24 hours a day spewing black smoke that stained the entire city. People in Beijing and Shanghai wore surgical masks because of the smog. As a near victim of pollution and an outdoors enthusiast after years of enjoying Minnesota's natural beauty, I felt a strong personal conviction to improve the situation. Unlike the helplessness I felt as a child struggling to breathe, this time I realized that my business interest and knowledge gave me a way to turn conviction into impact. Walmart CEO Lee Scott recently said, there need not be conflict between the environment and the economy. As an environmentalist and management consultant, I wholeheartedly agree. My career vision is to help industrial companies in China incorporate environmentally sustainable practices into their business strategies. While manufacturers traditionally view environmental issues as obstacles, I see significant long-term value in being green. I'm confident this vision is realistic because I've already seen benefits from clean manufacturing while at, the B at BCG. On a recent project, my team helped a chemicals company discover that their fastest growing customers preferred suppliers with environmentally friendly reputations. Consequently, our client started viewing environmental infrastructure as a marketing investment, not a capital cost. I also visited a chemical plant operated by my uncle outside Shanghai and learned that clean air technologies reduced his energy costs and won him a local community support. These examples inspire me to lead industrial firms in countries like China where stakes and opportunities are highest. My post-MBA path will start at BCG where I'll gain exposure to general industrial operations and have opportunities to employ business and leadership lessons. Afterward, I intend to tackle environmental regulatory compliance issues at a multinational chemical company. And within 10 to 15 years, I hope to launch my own consultancy, helping companies integrate environmental concerns into business strategy. My career vision stems from a passion rekindled with every breath. Now that I'm healthy, I intend to exhaust myself finding practical, sustainable solutions so that my future children can breathe a little easier. Whew. Okay, that's uh, me reading an entire MBA goals essay to you on this podcast, but it's really a qu quite a beautiful essay, and it's it's very readable and very memorable. So again, let's cover the, the core elements of a story. What is the complication? The complication is pollution in China, and the author makes this very personal to him by talking about when he was an infant uh, growing up in China, how he had severe asthma attacks and he was always in the hospital, etc. So that is the complication. What is the resolution? There is no resolution yet. He hasn't solved that problem, right? But this is an MBA goals essay. And what he does is then talk about his actions, the actions he's taken in the past and the actions he plans to take, you know, career-wise, to put himself in a position to help companies marry sustainability and profitability and hopefully improve the environment in countries like China and, and other developing countries. Um, so even in a career goals essay where you're talking into the future, 
I think it's also useful to introduce a complication into the essay, right? Because then there's a problem that needs to be solved and you're involving the reader. Uh, I want to know how this person plans to improve this situation. And then therefore, he has a really clear career narrative, a clear direction. I know the complication in his career. I know the actions he has taken in the past and which he plans to take career-wise to help solve this problem. It's very coherent. And through these actions and through the complication, we get a feeling of, of what type of person he is. I hope that you know, this episode will really help you identify you know, your strongest stories for those personal questions, for those questions about leadership, for those questions about accomplishment and failure. Um, you can use this structure, you know, introducing the complication, then talking about the actions you've taken, and then finally describing the resolution to the problem as well as your lessons learned. You can use that formula to really share and tell adcoms a lot about who you are as a person and, and what your traits and strengths are. Definitely check out the successful essays at oringo.com as well as um, 65 successful Harvard Business School application essays. I'll link to both of those. And then once you're able to identify those story elements, start using them in your essays as well. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to the Touch MBA podcast. Don't be shy. We have a mailing list. Go to touchmba.com and get yourself signed up. And we'll keep you posted with the best tips and insider interviews on how to get into your number one school. You can also find us on Twitter and Facebook at Touch MBA. See you soon.